Welcome back. This is Cosmic Reunion, Fourth Density. We're in Irvine, California. That's right, let's give it up. <laughs> you know, I've got a little belt strapping me to this chair that's then nailed to the floor right now because otherwise the cameraman would be going wild trying to catch me because it's that much of an energetic. It's floaty and yet really not so bad in the whole 3D thing also. So our next presenter is... <clears throat> For me, a truly fascinating person. Uh, again, this, um, this speaker, Laura and I had the um, opportunity uh, and what then became the pleasure to interview on our radio show. And uh, I was already familiar with her and her work. And I was impressed. <laughs> now, you must know about me, I look to the individuals that make up the collective to inspire me. I look for inspiration. I look to be impressed with energies and with what people are doing and with how they, they know, they just know, they know what they're doing here and they are just doing it. And this is what I found in Inelia Benz, is a dedication that comes from the true knowing of the why of her existence. And the why of her existence is all about us. And so this is so incredibly beautiful. She has a first degree, bachelor's degree, first bachelor's degree in communication studies. And as you listen to her, as you feel her energy, you know that it's because she's been so focused on communication, but this really comes from knowing why she was here and that communication was to play such a vital role. In 2010, she was asked to go public by her guides, and um, she sees this as about a seven-year process to 2017, and she didn't back down from it. More to the point, she absolutely stepped up in her power, in everything that she's about, to do what she is doing for us. She is here to be a voice, to be a messenger. She has a message for us. And the message is about letting us as individuals know that we are source, that we are the creators of the universe. So really her message is all about empowerment. Do you feel it? You feel that? I mean, she's not even up here yet. About empowerment. So, so I want you to open up your empowerment receptors, okay? And really receive this message. And this message, it's, it's, it's like so many of the other speakers and presenters here. This message is not about teaching you anything. This message is giving you the opportunity to remember. And that's, it. that's as simple as it gets. And one of the things about Inelia that, that impressed me is that she makes it so easy for us, okay? It, 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 she just puts it out there and it's, it's, it's simple. It's, it's not a lot to grasp onto. And so I was just speaking to her about that and she said it's all about the communication, effective, easy, I like this, and this next word, these next two words, this is where it hits home, mystery-free, 
No mystery. It doesn't need to have the mystery and she gets it across and explains it with that energetic. And that's why we, it's so easy, it's so easy to get. And so, of course, you know me, all about love. And so I say to her, I know you, tell me, tell me about, tell me about love. And she just looked at me right in the eye and she said, you are joy, light, love. My friends, I introduce to you, I know you Benz. Is that working? Well, I'm not often rendered speechless, <laughs> but here I am. So my name is Inelia Benz, and I'm here to raise the vibrational level of the planet. And um, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. And um, so. Hands up, everybody here who is also here to raise the vibrational level of the planet. No missing hands, right? Right? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Put your hand up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Do you see that? Every person here, yeah? And even if they think they might not be, and every person who listens to this afterwards or watches this video is here for the exact same reason. You are here, you incarnated on this planet to raise the, the, the vibration of the planet and the, of the human collective. And this is the most effective way to do it, to come in here, incarnate, you know, it doesn't matter what trajectory you came from. It doesn't matter where you had your evolutionary path. Whether it was from this planet, from a different planet, from a different dimension. Yeah? Because there's a lot of people here who are from different higher vibrational dimensions. It doesn't really matter. You're relevant. You're here to raise the vibrational level of the planet. The methodology, the way that you did it, was to come in and incarnate in one of these physical bodies. One of Gaia's babies, yeah? This is Gaia. Touch Gaia. You can touch Gaia, yeah? Yes, indeed. The planet was seeded with a ton of genetic material from all sorts of planets and all sorts of different dimensions. Your DNA is ultra-dimensional. Your physicality it's ultra-dimensional, yeah? And it was seeded with lineages, genetic lineages, from all over the, the known universe. And now we are incarnated in that. And that DNA, that genetic material, the building blocks at a 3D level and at many other different levels too, many other dimensional levels, it's made up of Gaia material, water, carbon, atoms of molecules of metals and minerals, yeah? Material from this planet, that's from this planet now, yeah? It's Gaia's babies, <laughs> your elementals, your physical bodies are from here. And the percentages of your genetic material, of how, where, what planet it came from, is different for each person. Yeah? And even the races, there's different races on the planet. And each race has genetic material that's unique to them as well. So when you have this soul, this being, 
who came in either had, their, had finished their evolutionary trajectory on the planet and was somewhere else now, or had had a trajectory, trajectory, evolutionary trajectory in a different dimension or planet, this being, the soul, when that soul joined and became one with the physical body, this physical body, then that moment, that moment is when you became a human being. That's what makes a human being. You can't have a physical body without the soul. Yeah? And you can't have a soul without the physical body in this planet right now, <laughs> in, in this collective. Join the two, that's what makes a human being. You're being human. Yeah? And human, the word, is really interesting because if you look at the ori origin of the hu hu human, it's humus, which means earth, made of earth. And you were able to come in, into this body. And you had a really rough time. That is, is true. Yeah? You came in not understanding and not knowing light-dark duality. Uh, not comprehending why anybody would want to harm another. Yeah? Not understanding why anybody would want to harm you. Yet a lot of individuals from these higher dimensional places came in and immediately around them, the individuals were, became extremely low vibration. And they abused the person, you know, they hammered them down, pushed them down, and people kept thinking, is this karma? What did I do? You know, it's like, what did I do? You did nothing, yeah? You know when something's karmatic because you learn from it, yeah? Or you, 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 you're playing a game, yeah? Karmic games, cycles that go on and on and on. But this is brand new, you just arrived on the planet, wham! <laughs> yeah? And it was simple, you knew it was going to happen, yes, you chose it. You were walking into a war zone. Yeah? This, is, this was the game. You walk into a war zone, you get shot. They try to take you down, yeah? But you're all here and you're all alive. You made it. And you're processing your stuff, you're learning, you're expanding your awareness. You made it. You're it. You are the ones raising the vibrational level of the planet. You're doing it. When they asked me a few months ago, what would you like to talk about in this uh, event? I thought, well, I don't know, it's months away. I don't know what I'm going to want to talk about. Um, I never know what's going to come, right? And then, so I thought, no, but we really need something. We need to put something on the website and everything. We need to, for you to give us a theme. So I was looking at it and looking at it and I thought, oh, it's about communication. It's actually, actually looking and demystifying communication. It's very simple, yeah? And communication, the way that it has evolved in our species, and the way the natural communication, like it's already been mentioned a couple of times, many, many times, Every, everybody, every presenter in this weekend has been saying exactly the same thing. Right? Exactly the same thing, using different language. And this is about the fact that how we have been communicating for the few thousand years uh, was a way in which we could experience um, like dark and uh, singularity, the illusion of sing being a singular being, being alone, disconnected and apart from others. It's an illusion, it's not really real. Yeah. But we are very attached to it, we're really, really attached. And it has come through in, in various forms. One of the forms, of course, the game we were playing was the light-dark paradigm, which includes the victim, aggressor, savior, martyr uh, paradigm. Yeah. So it's one of those. So you had to be separate from the other in order to have that game. 
And how it was programmed in is really interesting in and of itself, because originally the human beings were able to, and originally I'm saying again, like it's mentioned, thank you. <laughs> um, it's, the, it's the illusion of the linear time, right? Illusion of the linear time. So originally it could be in our future. Yeah. Yeah. And, but we see it as our past because it's easier for our minds to grasp. Originally the human being it's an amazing, amazing creation that was co-created. A lot of people say, gosh, the planet Earth and the human beings are so special. Why are we special? Because we are connected to just about every other sentient being in the known universe and every dimension as well. Yeah. And anything we do is going to ripple all across the entire universe. It's going to affect everything. Like the fairies, you know, they're going into the next dimension. It's like a domino effect. And even races that had um, volunteered, some of them didn't volunteer, they were, were genetic material was just taken. <laughs> um, but they did, some of them. One of them that did volunteer genetic material for the human species. I'm very concerned right now because they've realized as we are making this quantum jump into new dimensionality experience, they're going to be dragged in as well. They're going to have to evolve at a, at a physical level. And they're going, ah, oh, put the brakes on, you know? Chemtrails. <laughs> Fluoride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Communication originally was complete. One could be a singularity as a human being. One will be a singularity as a human being. And one could communicate telepathically with anybody on the planet, anybody outside the planet, any other species with whom we had either an energetic or genetic connection to. We could and we will originally do that, yeah? We can all do it, everybody. Everybody can do that. And what is telepathic communication? And a lot of information has been given to mess, up, mess that up. It is becoming the other person, becoming the other being. It's not about projecting thought. We project experience. We don't project it, actually. We, we make our space and allow the other to exist and be that space. Yeah? We become that being. And the vibration, of course, is really important. The easiest and fastest way to communicate with another being is to look at them. Look at that being and start thinking how beautiful you are. You're so beautiful. So beautiful. And you start feeling it growing inside of you. Yeah? And the other being starts feeling that too. And wow, you're one. <laughs> you're the same being. But it's really, really hard to do that. We, will, we might judge as a dark being. Because the game we were playing is like avoid those or be one of those, right? And they're an unsavory, the icky yucky for us. The energy feels, eh. And, but once you see that, like a dark being or a light being is in a game, are just like, I don't know, green and blue, all of a sudden your judgment comes out, you know, it, it starts dissolving. And then, even if you were to look at one of these beings, and you engage them, like, wow, you're so beautiful, you're so complex and interesting, they go, whoa, and they run away, you know, because they don't want to engage at that level. They want to go, woo, you know, and you go, ah. 
that's what they want, yeah? And if you don't do that, they go, I'm out of here, you know, this is not my game. She's ruining my game. <laughs> or he's ruining my game. They want to engage at their level, which is to fight, to destroy, to scare, to vampirize energies and all that stuff. It's a great game. We played it for thousands of years. If it wasn't so great, we wouldn't have done it, right? <laughs> but it's over. Game's over. We're moving into a, a new game, a, a new reality, a new experience. And that new experience doesn't have space for that. Why? Because there's no separation. The illusion of separation is dissolving, it's going away. More and more we are realizing, I am that tree, I am mean, that pet. I am that being, that person across the street, across the road. Yeah. The entire planet. I am Gaia. I am Gaia. I am the solar system. I am the Lemurians. I am the Palladians. I am the Anunnaki. Oh, I felt a bit of charge there. <laughs> yeah? I am the reptilians. And when we realize that when we move into that space, we go into a space which is our essence. Human beings, their essence, the building block, the main energetic configuration to be a human being is joy, light, love. Yeah. That's the closest words we can get to. <laughs> there are no words to describe our essence, but that's the closest human words we can express it with. And everything else is dissonant. The nature of a human being, and with the human being being the being, you know, the soul that came in and the physical body. Their essence is pure, joy like love. That's who you are. This is what we exist. We, this is our beingness. We don't enter a field of joy like love. We don't feel it. We are it. Our cells are made of it. Our energetic bodies vibrate at that level. That's what makes us. And you take that human and put them in a very, very like dark environment, a war, for example. They break. The other day I read, oh no, I was watching it. I walked past the television, it was on. <laughs> and there was a show on, and there were, the sentence that captured my attention was, They've uh, now released some statistics, the war statistics for the United States of America. And they found out, and I haven't checked it out, okay? I just heard it, I haven't gone back and researched it, so it might have been one of these shows that I was trying to, you know, do something else. They said, more soldiers die from suicide than in the battlefield. Yeah? Why? Why do they kill themselves? Because they broke. You put somebody in that situation, a human being who's joy like love, you break them. You're all light workers. In a way, the, the, the definition of raising the vibrational level of the planet. There is no difference between a like, dark worker and a light worker when I work with people. Yeah. I don't care what they are. If my engaging with that person or individual or group raises the vibrational level of the planet, I will engage. Yeah. If it's highly effective, if it doesn't, if it's not effective, it doesn't matter who they are. I will not engage. Communication that we're moving into and we moved out of for a while, 
if we look at it linearly, is the knowing that we are all those beings. We are the light, we are the dark, we, we're everything. And we choose moment by moment what vibration to play. Somebody asked me, well, you know, what about the result? I have no attachment to result. I don't care what happens to the planet. Really, honestly, I say, I'm here to raise the vibrational level of the planet. And so is everybody else. Millions of people have incarnated to raise the vibrational level of the planet. And whether it's raised or not, or what happens as it raises, because it is. I mean, you can't help it. It's just happening. It's irrelevant to me. Totally irrelevant. And somebody asked me, well, you know, if you had been asked to darken or to lower the vibrational level of the planet, would you have done it if that's the collective wish? If that was what the planet wanted? Yeah, absolutely. No charge. <laughs> but the human collective and the planet have made a choice. They changed the game. And the vibrational level of the planet was necessary to play this new game, this empowered, beautiful, amazing game, where we manifest instantly. It's going to take a few generations, actually, to do that. <laughs> but manifest so quickly, even nowadays. Yeah, you do a manifestation exercise, and the thing pops in the next week. You know, it's like, it used to take years. <laughs> and... This present moment, I personally, this e the, the ego me, gets frustrated sometimes. I go out and I see all the chemtrails and I feel my body being poisoned and I get pissed off. You know, I go, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I go, oh, whatever, you know, it's like, okay. And this was a kind of how moment that I had a couple of weeks ago. Because I knew for a fact, I knew this, that millions and millions of people on the planet, billions of people on the planet, have chosen to stay asleep. Yeah? They've chosen to stay asleep. And that's perfectly fine. That's good. This is what they want to do. Yeah? And then, and I knew that all these chemtrails and fluoride and all the news show programs, wars everywhere, and the arms industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and um, the religions, and the social programming, and all that stuff was necessary. Trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars spent every day to do all this stuff it was necessary to keep all these people asleep that have chosen to stay asleep because it's extremely difficult to stay asleep these days. <laughs> the vibration is so high, yeah. And, um, and this is how it happened, you know. So I was looking at it, I was looking at the human collective, and I was looking at that choice of splitting it, splitting it into two. At least, <laughs> the main split. Uh, continue with the 3D light-dark experience, no, nope. go on to the higher vibrational experience. And, um, and I'm okay, you know, I was like, okay, with all this poison stuff. And then I looked and I thought, well, how come they have it so easy, you know? It's like they decide to stay asleep and trillions of dollars are being spent to keep them asleep. What about us? <laughs> we could go and buy distilled water or buy a distiller or any of these special waters. We have to get rid of our fluoride. We have to you know, buy organic foods, we have to pay extra for those, we have to do meditation, we've got to, you know, detoxify our physical bodies, we have to concentrate every day not to get sucked into the drama, and we can't watch TV anymore. It's like, God, you know? <laughs> what is up with that? What? Yeah, it's like, when did we agree to that? Did I agree to that? You know, I didn't remember agreeing to that. And then I thought, oh my God, I am totally agreeing to that. Yeah? I was. It's like, I was walking down the street, taking my dog and my kid. 
poison, chemtrails, and my, my lungs were hurting and everything, and it could feel like rat poison or something in the air. God, I don't agree with this anymore. Sorry, but forget it. I take away my agreement for that. From, for, for that. Yeah? And that's really, really important. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We don't have to. We don't have to be the ones doing all the effort. We can change our mind. We can change our mind anytime. I thought, well, if we can change our mind about this, what about changing our mind about splitting the human collective into two and putting, letting some go to sleep and the others not? And I thought, yeah, I'm going to change my mind about that too. <laughs> yeah, and if, if enough people change their minds, then more and more individuals are going to start spontaneously waking up around the planet. So I would suggest, I would ask, would you like to, or would you be prepared to take away your agreement of them having it all easy and done for them, and us having so much stuff, and also take away the agreement that it's split. Why does it have to be? It doesn't have to be split. And then the communication, if you tap into the human collective, right this moment, you know, you tap into it, and you look at the planet, and you look at the universe, and you look at all the different dimensions, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's like, I don't know, like a kaleidoscope, a multidimensional one. That is absolutely perfect. This moment, this very moment, after all our resistances for all that stuff, it's absolutely perfect. The present moment is perfection in existence at a physical and a sentient level. It's perfect. It's beautiful. And what are we doing? We're just, you know, it's like a symphony. We're tuning up the, the, the instruments, a few notes. We're just tuning it up to see, you know, a different vibration. The colors of the kaleidoscope are Shadings, the shades and the colors are changing slightly. That's all. And it's happening perfectly. So why am I here communicating? Yeah. That we're, we're raising the vibrational level of the planet. Why am I communicating that you are the center of the universe, that you are the creator, that you are source, you are joy like love? Because the human collective and Gaia wants to play that game. Yeah? Wants to become the game that manifests just like that. Wants to become the game that sees more dimensions. And that's all Ascension is. My website's called Ascension 101. Very basic Ascension stuff. And Ascension is described as the expansion of awareness. Being able to see more, feel more, know more, in and of oneself, from the self. Becoming the self, becoming larger, expanding, becoming more, encompassing the entire human collective. Yeah? And when I said earlier, you know, it's like you would be able to communicate with anybody on the planet telepathically at any moment. We're doing it with our cell phones right now. Yeah? But we would be able to do it or tap into any information that we want, straight from the collective. We're going to search engines. <laughs> we're reflecting on the 3D what we not naturally are, who we naturally are. Yeah, that's right. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> so, when we go into that space, <laughs> they know, you see, we all come in knowing this stuff. 
feel the love. <laughs> when we feel about, when we, how do you feel about it? I mean, how do you feel about anybody being you and knowing everything about you, everything you have ever thought, every, every desire you've ever had, every thought, light, dark, terrible, that you've ever had, knowing everything about you in one instant? How do you feel about that? Is, it resist, is there a resistance? Yeah? Yeah, there is. There's a resistance. Because we, we honor our privacy. Yeah? We don't want anybody to know. Or we don't switch on the GPS on our cell phone because we don't want people to know where we are. <laughs> yeah? We don't want them to find us. And we keep all our secrets. And the internet is like exploded with people's secrets, yeah? People go there anonymously and type up their secrets. That illusion that nobody knows what you're thinking, it's an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Every thought that you've ever had is there on the human collective to be tapped by anybody at any time. And you can be 100, 2,000% sure, <laughs> I don't know if that even exists, that any thought that you have ever had, others have already had it. And other, others will also have it in the future. At the same time, each individual is singularly unique. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so ultra-dimensional communication. Most of it doesn't happen because we don't want people to know our thoughts. Whether it's other people on the planet, other human beings, the Palladians, the Lemurians, the fairies, the elves, the greys, the Anunnakis. We're afraid. We're afraid of being influenced, we're afraid of being possessed, we're afraid of them finding out about us, knowing our darkest secrets. And that fear it's just a vibration. It's a vibration that's very low and opens doors to fearful things. Yeah? Fearful energies and entities. And so it's, it can, you know, it grows. <laughs> it's like nothing happens to a person, to a being. Nothing, nothing happens without their agreement. Not even if they're in the womb. Right? Nothing can happen to them without their agreement. Case in hand, my mother tried to abort me three times. Nine months later, hi mom. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can happen to you, right? If you don't agree with it, honestly. Now that agreement can come in different ways, yeah? So you have, for example, a little baby, a little child, and you go up to that baby with a mask on, like a scary mask, and you go, wah, you know? I'm the boogeyman, I'm going to eat, eat you up. And the kid can go, Wah! and gets very frightened. Yeah? That baby is agreeing with you that you are that boogeyman and that you're going to eat it up. So then you can. Now if you go up to the same kid, or you could say to the kid, I'm an adult, I'm your mother, and you will do as I say, because I'm your mother. And the kid can turn around and say, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do what you say because you're my mother. Or they can turn around and say, yeah, whatever. Yeah? And they go through that transition, and when they start doing that, it's really frustrating. I've got four of them. <laughs> they am your mother, and you have to do what I say, only works to a certain point. And then after that, forget it. <laughs> so yeah, you get a gray come into your bedroom and say, I'm powerful, I'm going to take you away and do all sorts of stuff to your physical body. You go, oh my God, they're powerful, they're going to take me away. They do it, because you gave your agreement. 
If you turn around and say, F off, you know, I'm not, <laughs> no interest, go away. They can't. They really honestly can't do it. We choose the level of engagement. We choose the level of communication. And then, of course, you go, OK, so I want to communicate with the Lemurians, for example. I say the Lemurians because I've, I've had a, 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 quite a bit of communication with them, right? And um, so they, they actually wanted to communicate with them, and I kept saying, F off, I don't want to know about you. <laughs> Go away, leave me alone. <laughs> and, um, but if you want to, then the easiest way to do it is to think of them as extremely beautiful. Or the Pleiadians, or anybody, right? Or even if you want to communicate with that grey. Because maybe, I don't know, whatever reason, you, know, you might have a bit of saviour energy and you want them to wake up or whatever, right? So you start looking at that grey and start thinking how beautiful it is, how perfect, how genetically perfectly created they were for their job. They're amazing, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And all of a sudden you feel your entire energy field opening up. And then you choose the engagement level, you choose your level of communication with them. You don't want to have a like, vampiric type energy, whatever, but you'd like to see them. You want to look into their eyes and say, I see you. Yeah? That's the level of communication that comes naturally to human beings. How many people watched Avatar? Yeah. <laughs> it's a movie. And there's a, a few bits in that movie that triggered a lot of people who are here in this room. The first bit was when the bloke wakes up in the blue body. They're incarnated into the avatar and they get up and go, and they go, oh, my hairs are standing up, you know, all triggered up because you recognize having come in from a completely different reality and incarnated in a physical body that's so alien, yeah? And as your newborn baby, you were trying to learn how to use this freaking thing. It's like, ah, you know. Yeah. You know, you remember that. It's like a remembrance. A lot of people got triggered then, like emotionally remembered that time, that, that moment. Another moment that many people also remembered was the moment when she looks into his eyes and says, I see you really see you. Oh, lots of tears, you know. <laughs> Not just people who are awake recognize those moments. People who are asleep. Millions of them went to see that movie once, twice, three times. And that moment would bring tears into their eyes. Because everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be recognized, acknowledged. Yeah. And then the other moment that a lot of people got emotionally triggered was that moment when all the, I can't even remember the name of the race, <laughs> the blue people, <laughs> connected with each other and the, and the, and the planet yeah, through their hair and the tree. And they were all one and they were moving at the same time. They were all one and they were all in the same space same consciousness and you could tap into everybody else and all the information that was there for millions of years. And that stuff that the human species can do. Originally there, still there, originally in the future, yeah, to everybody here can tap and become because it's not about, it wasn't communication, you became that. Can become the human collective, can become the person next to them. And that's why, you know, I recently did a talk on love and sex and soulmates. That's why there's so much energy 
on the planet spent to find a special person. Because we've been taught that you can only do it with one person, that connection. And we've been taught that it's always inevitably sexual in nature. And Nora was saying that earlier, she was talking about or channeling the information that <laughs> this is a little puppy walking around. Um, she's channeling the information that that no, it wasn't Nora. It was the girl before. Her, that uh, oh, it was too. Both of them talked about it. Yeah, you both did. <laughs> that the sexual union between people is so messed up because it's full of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff and and attachments and links and energetic mess. At, the, at this level, energetic level, this area, yeah? And that gets all over the place, even the heart, and, you know, it's all messed up, you know? So, and so, we, and we are taught in this society that the only way that you can connect with somebody at that level has to be sexual, that we try it, you know, and we mess it up because it's full of stuff. And it doesn't. You know, it's like, if you look next to you and you're heterosexual in orientation, look around the room and see another person of your same sex right now. Yeah, do it. Have a look around and see somebody of your own sex. If you're heterosexual and if you're homosexual, look up somebody of the, op the same, the same, no. Yeah, the same sex. <laughs> I get confused. Bisexual, it's gonna be harder for you to do this exercise. <laughs> And if you're asexual, then anybody, yeah? <laughs> now have a look at them. Look at them. And feel yourself connecting, becoming one with that person. Is there a resistance? No. What about the guys? Are you resisting? So you can look at the other guy and be one with him, yeah? <laughs> And some people can. Yeah. That moment is so special when you see somebody completely and utterly and become one with them. And then the entire room, can we become each other? Our communication system made us wear our hair in a very particular way. I had to remember to brush it. Yeah, this morning. But by the time I got here, it was all messy already. I didn't bring a hairbrush. I go, oh my God. <laughs> Communication. I'm saying I care about you. I will brush my hair because it's a sign of respect. Yeah? It's long and dark because it triggers certain programs in the human collective. depending on the culture, what programs get triggered. And that allows me to communicate a little bit easier. The clothes we are wearing today were chosen, either consciously or unconsciously, to give out a message. I believe in, believe in this. I am this type of person. I am of this culture. Yeah? the colors that you're wearing, if you're wearing a hat, you're talking, you're communicating at a very physical level all the time. The way you hold your body, the way you're sitting down right now is saying something. I'm gonna tell you something. Before I told you to look across the room to somebody of the same sex, most people like were sitting like this. And then, like that. And they, they did at a mental level, but at a physical level, becoming one with the other person physically, they instinctively knew to close that energy off. Instinctively knew to do that. Because they have stuff there, and the other person has stuff there. You don't want to share that stuff. We're a few days away from sharing that stuff. <laughs> yeah? 
communication. I wear white stuff, you know, when I go do public things. A lot of my videos, I'm wearing white, white clothes. They want to, with my guys and in entourage, they, you know, like white dresses and white trousers and forget it. Mean, like, <laughs> you know how difficult it is to keep a white dress or a white pair of trousers clean? <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> and I go through this a lot. I mean, this one's already stained, I'm going to have to get another one. <laughs> it triggers a communication. When you think, Long, dark hair, big eyes, wide clothes. What triggers? Yeah? What am I communicating here? Holy. Precisely. <laughs> Holy. Complete. And those icons are all over the planet. All over the planet. And this is what you're doing. You're being effective in your communication. You've been extremely effective in your communication with the way that you're dressed, whether you have makeup on or shaved. I shaved. <laughs> <laughs> you shaved too? <laughs> Good. We had to, right? Because you've got the freaking camera there. <laughs> right. <laughs> You changed. Right, now she's wearing black now. Look, can you stand up? See how different she's wearing. Stand up, stand up. Not black, changed. Yes, she changed. Yeah. She's now in her special private space. Yeah. It's fascinating, fascinating. The way we communicate, the shoes we wear. Or not wear. <laughs> We're communicating at all times. Most of the time we do it unconsciously. We communicate completely unconsciously through programs. You know, I'm a woman, so I have to walk this way. I've got to wear makeup, you know. I have to go and wear these type of clothes. Women have it easier because women can wear trousers and, you know, shirts and stuff. And men can't really wear dresses and not get funny looks in the streets. Yeah. So every time we put something on, we're communicating something. Yeah? And some people put a lot of focus and attention on that. This, this stuff, it's not really you know, effective for somebody like you who are aware, right? But out into the media, like people who are just waking up, highly effective, somebody who just woke up, who just realized, hold on a minute, what's going on? There's more to life than just having a job? Yeah. For that person, this is extremely effective. So they come in and start watching, and all of a sudden, instead of saying, Come to me, I shall save you, which is the old message, which was necessary for the old, whatever, past few thousand years, they say, You are empowered. You are source. You can choose what you have in your life. It's just a bridge, a communicational bridge. One of these individuals found a photograph on the internet of me with a red dress. It's beautiful, I still have my dress, I love it. It's gorgeous, it's got little string straps, you know, low cut, very hug fitting, fitting and flowy, and it's got red and orange and sparkles, and it's beautiful. And, and I, I, I wear it for special occasions, yeah? So it's a wedding, I had it on. And I was sitting with my future father-in-law in a bar, yeah, with a cocktail in my hand. Because yeah, I drink cocktails. <laughs> actually, that was a bit of a misunderstanding, because it actually wasn't a cocktail. Because <laughs> I, I didn't like the cocktails they had, so I had a, like a soda or something in this glass with lime in it. I think it was that time where they had a, a virgin cosmopolitan or something, I can't remember. But it, I was sitting there like this, you know, with <laughs> Different message. <laughs> and this person went crazy over this photograph. She says, she's not real, she's a fake. Look, she's got a red dress and she's drinking a cocktail. 
<laughs> and lots of people started saying, oh, that's right, yeah, she's a fake. <laughs> she wears a red dress and drinks cocktails. <laughs> Communication. <laughs> So I decided not to um, put my bikini photographs on my Facebook page. <laughs> I had a really nice one that I really liked. After having four kids, you know, sometimes you look at your physical body and you go, yeah, you know, you're kind of all right. <laughs> yeah, you're very pretty. <laughs> but then I was like, oh, that wouldn't be a very good idea for you to put your bikini photographs on the internet, wrong message, you know. This is who we're going to try to reach. We're trying to reach the masses here. You're not going to reach the masses with a bikini. Actually, you could. You could do it really well. Actually, you could. You could have like the bikini guru or something, right? <laughs> I thought about doing a, um, a series of videos in my pajamas. So it could be the pyjama guru. <laughs> Everything to break that concept, yeah? The concept of, oh, you're holy, yes, that thing. But I use it at the same time. Communication. Now, if you were to look at every item that you're wearing today, every item that you're wearing, and consciously look at it and think, to yourself, what was my intention? What was the energy of communication I wanted to convey with this item? So look at your top right now, yeah? Have a look at your top, really look at it. Have a look at it. Have a look at it. What was it? What was your intention behind wearing that top? What was that? I'm not that bad. Yeah, very good. <laughs> he was conveying, look girls, I am eye candy. <laughs> and he is. Let's look at him. Let's enjoy this eye candy. Yeah? Guys, girls, everybody. You see, we all really, if we look at it, we can see the intention behind our communication. Yeah? And if we look for tomorrow, just, let's just do tomorrow. Go through your wardrobe tomorrow or tonight, depending on when you plan your wardrobe. I plan it after I come out of the show and go, where's my clothes? <laughs> <laughs> when you look at tomorrow and you're choosing your clothes for the day, have a look at each item and ask yourself, how can this reflect my essence? How, which item will reflect on how I wear it that I am joy, light, love? Yeah? Before you go out, the way you wear your hair, or not hair, hat, whatever, earrings, stuff. Be consciously aware. And you don't have to choose everything for like love. You say, well, actually, you know, I want to convey this different message. So I'm going to wear this stuff. Yeah. The way we communicate. The, 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 the things we do with our faces. Yeah. My lips are dry right now, and I licked my lip like that. There's going to be loads of comments on the internet saying she's a reptilian, she licks her lips. <laughs> <laughs> communication. Be very aware of communication. Not necessarily to judge it. This is a bad communication, and this is a good communication. But actually to be clear in your intent about that communication. So if I want to communicate, I want to be in my own personal space right now, you wear something dark, yeah? Or something very plain. If you want to convey, you know what, I'm not sexually interested in having a relationship right now. <laughs> 
you wear a wedding ring. <laughs> you wear clothes that... Right, exactly, yeah? You wear clothes that amplify you as a man or a woman. Yeah? I'm not interested. So, communication that's a physical level. Communication in words. Words. At the moment, for a few thousand years now, we've been using words. What are words? Words are little packets of energy divided from each other. Yeah? Oh, ding, 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 ding. That then you have to string together to find out what the other person's experience was. Highly complicated. <laughs> when you could just be that person for a few seconds and know it all. Yeah? But in order to have the division of singularity, we needed to have a language so that our capacities, an illusion was placed in, a program was placed in that said, you cannot be one with other at any time that you want. You cannot be one with the collective. And part of that was words. We were programmed with words. Words were placed in us. And words are actually really powerful. You can change your genetic material with words. It's been proven. They've done tests. You can change your DNA with words. You can change your life by repeating certain words. You can reprogram habits and belief systems by saying different words for 21 days. Just 21 days and you got it. Reprogram yourself with words. And words are all these separate little communication, energy, energetic meanings, right? All stringed together to create um, a reflection of an idea. A reflection. When I was really small, my dad wrote dog on a piece of paper. And he put it in front of me and he says, what's this? And I looked at it and I said, it's a dog. It's a dog. I said, no, no, it's not. Well, what is it then? It's, it's a word that represents a dog. There's a difference, yeah? We're using words to represent experience. And now, each word has been programmed with energy from the beginning. Yeah? When I was saying the word, if you trace the word back to its origin, and you look at human, yeah, of the earth, or made of earth. And if you look at different words, you know, it's like delighted. Delighted is not in the light, right? Something like that. It programs you that to be in the light, then you have to be miserable. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it's a program. So it's programs that come in through words. And not only that, because of the meaning of the origin of the words and the meaning that we give the words now. And some words are really powerful and strong and have a lot of charge around them. I grew up in the UK, okay? And in the UK, we don't have the N-word. And I was in college. See how serious everybody went? I was in college and I was doing um, a social studies unit here in, in the United States. And the class started talking about the N-word, you know? And the N-word started here, and the N-word there, and this is what the N-word meant. And I was going, what the hell is the N-word? You know, it's like, and it was like half an hour, it was like an hour into the lecture, and she hasn't explained what the N-word is. So I, I put my hand up, you know? And she said, yes, do you have a question? She says, yes, what is the N-word? And everybody was really quiet. Yeah? Really, really quiet, you know, right? <laughs> and then this black girl stands up and she laughs, you know, and she said, you know, I'm the only person here who can tell you what the N-word is. <laughs> None of them are allowed. Because <laughs> it's so fully charged. You know, oh. So words have very... They're very powerful, they're full of power, they're full of energy, full of charge and other things. 
And if we consciously communicate or have the intent when we wake up, every word that comes out of my mouth, just the intent, every word that comes out of my mouth, and every word that I text, every word that I email, every word that I write, is going to communicate, it's going to be joy like love. Just the intent will change everything. And when you find yourself with the intent of telling somebody that, or hurting somebody's feeling, or telling them what's right, <laughs> yeah, and how much wrong they are, and you're right, and you go back and thinking, okay, all these words that are coming out, all this F and B and C. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are coming out of my mouth. They don't really have an intent of joy, like love in them. They have another intent. Yeah. It's becoming conscious. And then when you become conscious of it, then you can make a conscious choice. You know what? I do want to convey how angry I am at that person. So you do it, but you do it fully. You don't resist. With a full intent, the person's going to be punched in the face with your words. And they are. They saw all of a sudden, you go, oh. You know? And that's good. Because you're consciously choosing what intent is behind your words. Now if you go, oh yeah, but my intent today was to, every word is supposed to be joy like love, now I messed it up, you know? Then you go back. You can always change your mind. You can go back. You start from, you know, it's the present moment that's important, not what happened a second ago. Because when we feel the fear, when we feel that anger, if, like Nora said, if you push it away, it's going to get stronger. If you resist it, it will get stronger. If you, if you deny it, invalidate it, or make it wrong, it's going to get stronger. The only way to clear all those energies is to morph them back into source energy, joy like love. How do you do that? You embrace them. Yeah. Fear, you're welcome here. You're welcome in my field, and I'm not just doing this to get rid of you. <laughs> For this moment, <laughs> you're totally welcome here. Yeah, you have to do it moment by moment. Because otherwise, you go, oh, I'm, I actually am yeah, processing this fear to get rid of you. And it's like, yeah, I. Totally acknowledge you. I, 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 I see you. I see you. As long as you go away, it's not really going to work. Yeah? You really have to embrace it. Once you embrace it, it becomes expressed in your energy field, in your physical body. It expresses it. It, it burns itself out. It, it dissolves. It, it gets disentangled, all these energies, and they go back to source, which is what? You. They are become joy like love. And then you have a lot more energy. A lot of people write to me and say, well, you know, it's like all these chemtrails and all that stuff. I get very angry. They're in the, very much in the victim, aggressor, savior, martyr energy. Yeah? And that if you go in with that energy and you look at the child who's been beaten up or the little pet who's been tortured, and you go, you poor little thing, you bastard, why did you do that? You're not allowed, go to jail. And you put a little thing, look, you put a little victim, innocent victim. Then you are giving strength to that cycle. You are validating and strengthening the energy of victimhood in that pet or that a child. And you're strengthening and giving power to that aggressor energy in the scary person. Now, if you process all that anger and frustration first, and you allow it to exist in your field, and then you look at them as equals. And you say to the little pet or the little child, you are a divine, eternal being. You have a choice. And if you didn't, you obviously, sometimes, most of the time that happens and comes into awareness because they need to be here that. Yeah. You can do anything on 
this planet and you don't have to agree to being in that cycle anymore. And you know what? If you want to continue in that cycle, if, you haven't, if you're not done with it, do it somewhere else because this planet is no longer compatible with it. And the same to the aggressor. Yeah? Same message. A message of empowerment, of choice. Without judgment, but knowing very well what you want to have in your experience or not. Often, most individuals will behave and will go through life the way in which they are treated by others. These are you know, experiments that have been done all over the place in offices, school places, companies, where a person goes out the door, yeah, and then everybody's told in the room, okay, this person is invisible or you know, they're really bad at their job. And then the person comes in for the next half an hour, everybody treats them like they are that. All of a sudden, or that they're the most important person in the, in the company. All of a sudden, the person starts changing the way they walk, their face changes, the way they start communicating changes. It's amazing. Amazing. So if, if you're in a situation, even physically, in a situation where you, 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 a victim-aggressor cycle has come into your reality, and you grab one of them, which one's going to grab the aggressor? I don't know. <laughs> But you say to them, you empower them, and you say, you know, you can do anything on anything. You're extremely powerful. You're an eternal powerful being. You have choices. You can choose what your life is, really, honestly. You can now. Yeah? The way that person will react is very different. So if you went, oh, you poor darling. I've tested it with my kids. <laughs> When they were little, right? They would fall over, and if I just kind of, he fell over. They would go, land on the floor, and look around, look at me. And they'd just get up and walk away and carry on playing. If they fell down, and I went, oh, you poor darling, are you hurt? Wow! <laughs> he, he or she would be crying for like half an hour or so. For as long as I would continue saying how, you know, how sorry I was for them. So yeah, the way we communicate really affects the intent behind the words. Affects not just others but ourselves. It affects us. Ultra-dimensional communication. When we communicate with another species. The intent behind that communication has to be very conscious, right? So if you're coming in to say, you know what, I need a savior, you're going to communicate that. And those individuals, those species that are not savior, in, they don't have that paradigm, they're not, they won't be able to respond to you. Or they will be able to respond in a way that they try to empower you to become your own self. Um, those species who will piggyback on that communication will be those who want to be worshipped, want to save, haven't finished saving others. Yeah? And to communicate, most individuals, most, most individuals from other species or collectives that are high vibrational find it extremely difficult to materialize physically on this planet. They can, if you make a field for them, yeah, a field of high, vib high vibrational field. And so that's, a lot of people have had very high vibrational individuals materialize in front of them. Yeah. But you have to create that field, that, open that door. Most individuals can't do that, you know, so they, mo on most of the planet they can't really materialize. Physical, um, those ETs or ex ultra, ex uh, extra dimensional, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's not extra dimensional because they're in the physical realm. Um, extraterrestrial beings who are physically here, 
And some of them are not extraterrestrial, they're actually from the planet originally, <laughs> like originally. Um, they are able and they have been doing all sorts of stuff at the physical level, yeah. But isn't there no different to other humans in that sense? And communicating with those, I had an experience of communicating with a, a little couple of beings who were there as I was growing up. And some of you have already heard this story, it's like, it's quite funny actually. Um, you want to hear again? <laughs> 10 minutes, okay. So, the, when I was really small, I didn't exactly know how the planet worked at any level. Meh, I didn't know that, you know, you couldn't get into other people's minds because they found it invasive, you know. Or be them, you know, you had to be yourself, and all sorts of things, I didn't know, I had no boundaries. <laughs> Literally. And I didn't realize that other people were creating boundaries. And um, so these two beings, started hanging out with me. They were two little beings, you know, they're physical. They were like you and me physically there. Their heads were a little bigger than human beings and they were wearing wigs and children's clothes to make themselves really uh, you know, available for me. You know, I was a little kid, you know, my physical body was a little kid. And we used to hang out and, you know, occasionally when they took me to a psychiatrist, you know, um, they gave me this puzzle to do and they said, um, Pretend you don't know how to do that, you know. <laughs> so why? It's just because if you do that, they're gonna think you're a genius, and you're gonna, then you're gonna have this trajectory, and you don't want that. You don't want to be tested. You don't want to be in this place like most days of the week, and you know. Oh, okay. So I pretended not to, you know. And then another bloke, you know, this bloke asks me. I can't even remember the question, you know. And I need the answer. He says, uh, no, no, answer it this way, you know, it's like, what is that? You know, whatever, you know, like a little kid would answer it, so I did. So they were really, really useful, you know, they were very, very close to me, and they would look after me, and explain things to me, and it was really cool. And then one day they said, we're going to be, we can't really let you see us anymore, because if, if you continue seeing us as you grow, you won't be able to really be a human being, yeah? You're going to be shunned and different and all sorts of things. So we're going to step back. We're always going to be there. Always going to be there for you. We're always going to be with you. Whenever you think of us, you're going to be, we're going to be there. We can communicate with you telepathically. Yeah. So they're going to send information to me directly. I thought, cool, all right, yeah, whatever. And um, so I stopped seeing them with my physical eyes. I couldn't see them anymore. So fast forward 40 years. 37 years, <laughs> fast forward. I had given birth to my youngest um, about six months earlier or something, or four months or something. And I was sitting in my room, I was sitting, I had fed the baby, he was in his uh, crib, and um, I was meditating. And I, I had a question, so I called them forth and asked them about something that I wanted to understand about human species, and they gave me the answer. And then I said, you know what, this is ridiculous. You know, I'm 40 years old, and, or 40 whatever, and then, you know, it's like I'm an adult, I know that you're there, so why can't you just materialize again? I want to have a proper conversation with you. Well, you know, we used to play tea, you know, having tea together, and we could have a proper cup of tea this time, right? I know how to make it now. <laughs> and they were saying, nah, because your body's going to be very frightened. Bodies don't like things appearing out of thin air. I said, oh no, of course not, it's fine. <laughs> She's not gonna be, I'm not gonna be frightened, my physical body's gonna be just fine, and we just tell her it's just fine, it's safe. You know, I've known you forever, how could you not be safe? And they were laughing and said, you're gonna be frightened. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not I'm honest, you know, go on, just do it. Wham, there they were. Ah! <laughs> my body bolted out of that room like a scared horse, bolted out of the room, down the stairs and into the kitchen. I have no idea why I went into the kitchen. <laughs> Enough! <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> There's knives in the kitchen. <laughs> and I was going all the way down, stop, stop! I was trying to tell her to stop, you know, that she was safe. No, she wouldn't listen. And I was like, whoa, out of there. And you could hear them laughing. He was like, ah! Oh. 
They laughed for days about this. Days! So yeah, ultra-dimensional communication, a lot of the time, is stopped by your physical body. Yeah. And it's stopped by yourself as well, if you have fears around it. Yeah. We, we, we choose what we see, we choose what we, not, we don't want to see. We really, really do. That's why some people can film and see um, sp spaceships, yeah? and others can't. So it, it, your reality, you, you can change reality, or you can see so powerfully that it gets reflected on a film. It's really quite amazing. So my, I suppose, advice would be moving forward with ultra-dimensional communication would be, first of all, process all of your fears. What does that mean? You welcome your fears and you let them exist. Yeah? You allow them to exist and grow, but don't become your fear. Don't become the process. After you've had enough, you go into that space of joy like love and you infuse it with it and then you continue the next day. Yeah? You trigger it again and you, you process it a few more minutes or hours and then continue the next day and so forth. And eventually it will go away. I know because I did it with spiders. <laughs> My body was terrified of spiders. So yeah, I can deal with ultra-dimensional beings but spiders. <laughs> And I processed it, and it took me a few weeks, you know? That took a few weeks to process that fear out of my system. I don't know, maybe she was bitten at some other point in her lineage, in her trajectory. So process your fears first, and then have the intent of what you want to communicate, how, at what level, and with whom, yeah? You want to communicate, have that intent. And don't overanalyze it. It's just putting an intent, this is what I want. Yeah? This is what I'd like to experience. And then if it doesn't happen, just review it, you know, see, see the vibration and energetically, you know. Like now, for example, this very moment, we could have the intent that a Lemurian make, makes himself or herself physically here available for us, right? Right here. But immediately we feel the vibrational resistance because it would be scary. And it wouldn't be the right time because we're in front of a camera. Yeah. And it's, it would be like a, a party trick because it's not really what they're about. Yeah. And it's going to be really difficult because we're on, on the planet right now that's being bombarded with negative vibrations. So for them to have a physicality, it would be extremely uncomfortable and difficult. Might even kill the person, I don't know. So yeah, I didn't have time to tell you about the communications with the Lemurians, you know, but how long do I have? Like five minutes? <laughs> okay, really quickly, a summary. So a few years ago, um, I got this kind of feeling that there was a, a new collective that was new, new to me, right? Not, not new on the planet, they're very old on the planet and in the universe, but to me that wanted to communicate and collaborate. Yeah. So I tapped into them and the word Lemurian came up I searched it on the internet. Oh, Lemurians, wow, yeah, really cool people. And then, um, but what do you want? You know, it's like, what is your intent? What, do you have an agenda? They do have an agenda. Their agenda is to collaborate and raise the vibrational level of the planet. <laughs> yeah? Collaborate in helping individuals to become more aware. They highly, they have really good um, technology as well. I don't know the nature of their technology, maybe crystals and stuff, I don't know. And um, so I said, okay, what, what, what is it? You know, it's like, and it wasn't clear and that got me frustrated. Because look, with your technology, I could go to where you are, or you could come here and we could really have a conversation and you're making it really difficult to communicate with you, because I don't have her gift, right, Nora's gift? <laughs> well, it's the other side, right? It's like the, cho the, the, the choice 
Right, the filters, yeah. So it was, it's really difficult for me to understand this stuff. So I said, you know, forget it. If you're not going to do it my way, then it's not going to be any way. And I'm really, yeah, like that, yeah. Like, really hard in the head. And um, <laughs> so they insisted and they sent me people who spontaneously would give me Lemurian crystals out of nowhere. It's like, I just met the person and said, I've got to give this to you. That's why I was carrying it today. I've had it for 20 years. What is it? It's a Lemurian crystal. Ah. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. <laughs> and I just got to over there. <laughs> And all this stuff started happening, and all of a sudden I was having a cup of tea with a friend, and this other friend came in out of nowhere and started telling her about, or telling us about an experience she had with the Lemurians 20 years earlier before they, anybody knew about the Lemurians. So all the information started coming, coming in from different locations, and I can recognize their energy. I know where they are. And when I was in Spain last year, we went to Barcelona. I, went, I was in Barcelona, went to a mountain, I can't remember the name of it, and I thought, oh my gosh, they're here. I, had, I, I didn't know they were there. And then I, I turned to my, the person, my guide, and, and I said, are the Lemurians here? And she said, oh, that, yeah, they are, they, they're here. <laughs> They've been here forever. It's like, yeah, didn't you know that? And I said, no, no, I didn't know that. They, they have a very special vibration that's palatable. It's very recognizable because we are, we are that family. We are just part of that vibration, you know? We have it. Three minutes. <laughs> didn't have any time for questions either. Um, so that was what I, I was telling the story because I wanted to express how we can choose our level of communication and the format. We have a choice. Yeah? We can choose who we communicate with and who we don't communicate with at any time. And even in individuals, you know, it's like, yeah, my, my choices are basically made with effectiveness. I choose to communicate with individuals which will, which will facilitate the, the higher, you know, vib you know, making the planet higher, vib vibrate higher. Yeah? So that, that's the people I, I choose to communicate with, the species that I choose commun to communicate, but it has to be in a way that's easy for me, because if I have to spend like 10 hours trying to, to figure something out, that's 10 hours that I could be doing something else. Yeah? So yeah, we have a, like a little game with the Lemurians, yeah? <laughs> And it will, it will resolve itself, yeah. So for the next 21 days, have that intention, yeah? Intent of how do I want to communicate, both at a physical human level, with your clothes, with your words, yeah? And also, ultra-dimensionally, the intent. Who do you want to? And have really, really look at that intent. Does it have a bit of victim-aggressor energy there? Does it have the savior energy there? Does it have the collaboration energy there? Does it have the just joy of, I, I want to hang out with you energy there? Yeah? Have a look and see. And have, be conscious of that intent going forward. And it's okay, don't judge it. If you want to communicate anger or fear or whatever, do it. But you're consciously choosing. You're consciously doing it. That's a huge difference, huge much more effective. Thank you. Wow, that was not nearly enough applause for Inelia. Can we please? My friends, and there's no truer char characterizing our relationship than calling you my friends after what we have experienced together these last two days. And I sit here completely drained and yet completely filled up with this amazing energy. So a couple of things before you all leave. Um, 
you are on the front lines of all of this. You have chosen to be there. You showing up at this event and making this important enough for your attention and your energy means that you are ready to take what you have learned, allow it to adjust whatever needs to be adjusted within yourself, and be that beacon of light and love in your local communities and for your family. This is what is needed. It doesn't stop in this room right now. It's about us owning this, taking it out there, inspired action, and just opening things up even more than we can believe individually, because it's even more because we're doing it collectively. It seems like a whole day since I told you all I loved you, so I just want to feed this in right now. I love you. I'd like all of the speakers to come up here right now, if we could. The speakers that are still here, Robert, Barbara, Nora, I know you, Laura, who else is? And let's have our musicians, anyone that was doing sound and vibration, I want you all to come up here. Okay? Wow. Wow. I just, for me, there is such an energy of appreciation right now and an immense gratitude. And for me right now to be sitting here in the middle of some of the most amazing, focused, dedicated, and committed beings that I have ever encountered in my life <laughs> just has me about ready to explode out of my skin. So, my fellow speakers and presenters, I thank you so much. I thank you for your energy. I thank you for inspiring me and everyone else. Thank you. And now, I would like Neil and Ilya and Sol to come up here. I want you to stand right here in front of me because this is not about me. This is about the three of you and dedication, commitment, love, inspiration. You embody it, you encompass it, and you share it with all of us. Love and gratitude doesn't even begin to express what we all feel for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. And will you share some of your energy? Guys, say a few words. So I guess you guys had a little bit of fun. Just a little, right? The intention for this is really to empower ourselves so that we can move forward as centered whole beings and share our wholeness with others. So I hope and I speak for all of us here from the bottom of our hearts that you feel some sort of centeredness and wholeness within you from this and you can go out and share that with the rest of the universe so we can create this new vibrational existence that we all know that we're stepping into. So, so much gratitude for you and I honor each and every one of you for stepping up to really play the role of way shower, light worker and empowered being that we can shine our light on all of existence. So thank you so much. I'm just speechless right now. I mean, I'm, I'm just so grateful to, to have each and every one of you here and everybody that's going to be watching this in the future. I mean, my whole intention is very simple, just like Anelia was saying, to raise the vibration, to expand the awareness of humanity and the whole of creation. And I'm just super humbled to have been given the opportunity to facilitate gatherings such as these and you know, I want to continue doing it as much as I can and serve the one infinite creator with love, light, and joy in the highest ways possible and to just have fun and to hold that space of having fun for each and every being in creation forever and ever. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. You guys rock. We had a really, really awesome time, and 
I have to tell you, we put a lot of work into it, and thank you guys. I don't know, that's it, man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Real quick, um, let's all do three alms with each other, since we have like an awesome group of people right now, so let's just all take a deep breath in. Let it out, we're gonna take two more breaths. Another deep breath in. Let it out with a sigh. Now another deep breath in. Now an exaggerated sigh. Let it all out. All right, so let's do three homes. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you for all the volunteers and special thanks, special gratitude to our amazing best MC ever, yeah. Dr. Drew! Yes! I love you brother. Thank you. thank you all for being here and continue to have the best day ever. Thank you. We have um, a parting gift for each one. My daughter Maya is over here in the hoodie by the door and um, from David from the Light Party up in Marin County. Um, he has sent us all sorts of CDs and so um, go on over and get your CD before you leave. Thank you all. Also, if you guys would like to purchase a DVD of any of the speakers, they are available at the camera booth. $10 for one, $20 for three, and $50 for the complete set.